In this video, we're going to talk about our second parenting principle. Here it is. Discipline is not optional. The Bible says that if we love our kids, that we'll discipline them. Now, I know our culture has something very different to say. I think if you read a lot of the pop culture and you're watching TV and the talk shows, you're going to hear, you know, you just really try to be friends with your kids and discipline is bad. And they kind of put discipline in this negative context. But the truth is, the way God designed the family to work is that discipline is an important part of our kids developing, growing, and maturing. How else are our kids supposed to learn right from wrong? How else are our kids supposed to learn that there's consequences, negative and positive, for every action that we do? Discipline is an important part of training up our kids, and it's part of God's design. And so if you love your kids, you're going to be willing to discipline them when necessary. So parents, make sure that you start from the beginning of recognizing that discipline is not a negative thing. Discipline is not just about punishment and being mean to our kids. Not at all. The way God designed discipline to work, and if we're doing discipline well, it's that it's a training tool that's teaching and protecting our kids. Parents, one of your main responsibilities is to direct your kids on the right path. You're the leaders in the home. You set the tone in your home. Your kids need to follow the example and the path that you've set before them. So discipline is a necessary tool for you to use, for your kids to understand you're the parents and they're the kids. They aren't in control. They're not running the show. You're running the show. And the reason is because you're the adult. You're the parent. You have more wisdom. You have more experience. And you know what you're trying to do for your kids. And they need to follow your lead. And don't forget this, the things that you're training them now, even as young kids, is going to follow them into adulthood. So if you don't establish now the understanding of rules and boundaries and consequences for when you don't obey or you don't follow those rules, if you don't train those into your kids now, when they become teenagers, it's going to get a lot more complicated because you haven't created that understanding and that system isn't in place. Then when they become teenagers and sometimes even bigger than you physically, how are you going to be able to establish that kind of authority in their life to say, listen, you may be older now, you may think you're smart, but I'm still your parent and you're going to listen to me and you're going to follow my rules as long as you're in my home. The earlier you can establish that with your kids, the discipline is something that happens to train and to teach and that there are rules that they're going to follow and that you're leading them in the direction they need to go. The sooner you get that established, the easier it's going to be as the kids get older. Again, here's what Proverbs says. Direct your children onto the right path and when they're older, they will not leave it. Now, Proverbs is not giving us a promise there that if we do everything right, that we're going to have perfect kids. It's just a principle that if you raise your children the right way, if you discipline them when necessary, that it's more likely that as they grow older, that's what they're going to continue to follow in the path that you had laid out for them. And here's another thing. Good discipline should turn your child's heart toward God. And here's what I mean. The goal of good discipline is not that we just punish our kids every time they fail and just make them feel like, you know, you really messed up this time and make them feel bad about themselves. The goal of good discipline is that as we're teaching them right and wrong, as they have to pay the consequence, so to speak, for wrong behavior or broken rules or, you know, not obeying us as parents, is that ultimately we're training them to understand that their obedience, their response, them learning right and wrong choices is more about training their heart a heart that is not just bitter on the inside saying, fine, I'll obey you on the outside, but on the inside, I hate you and I don't want to do this. But that the ultimate goal is that as we train them and teach them that discipline is for their protection, that it's for training them up to be ready to be adults someday, that their heart's going to say, I want to obey my parents. I want to do what's right because I know that that's what honors my parents and ultimately what honors God. Here's what Hebrews says. No discipline is enjoyable while it's happening. It's painful. But afterward, there will be a peaceful harvest of right living for those who are trained in this way. And here's the last thing I want to say about discipline. Remember the three C's of discipline. This is the practical stuff. Remember to be clear with your discipline, be consistent with your discipline, and be corrective with your discipline. So if you're being clear with your discipline, that means your kids understand what are the rules of the house, what's right, what's wrong, what are the rules that I need to be obeying, and make sure that those are very clear. And also be very clear, what are the consequences if you don't follow those rules or if you disobey? The second thing is that make sure that you're consistent. So every time a rule is broken, 
every time a boundary is crossed that you give the consequence. Because what we don't want to teach our kids is that you obey sometimes, but you don't have to obey every time because that's just gonna create confusion and more trouble. So you wanna be consistent. Every time you see disobedience or a broken rule or a missed expectation, that there's a consequence. Because again, remember, discipline is about training. So you wanna make sure that you're training your kids to understand right from wrong choices. And that when wrong choices are made, there's gonna be a consequence. And then the last one is corrective. Make sure that you use discipline in a way to teach. So when a rule is broken, when your child disobeys, you give them the consequence, but then sit down and talk to them. Here's what went wrong. Here's the rule that you broke. Here's where you disobeyed. And here's why I had to punish you for that. And then be able to say, what's the better response next time? What's the right way? What was the right choice to make? And how did you go about making the wrong choice? And let's correct that for the next time. Again, discipline is for teaching and training. So the goal is that every time you have to discipline your child, they're learning the lesson. And hopefully the next opportunity they have toward that same choice or same rule, they're gonna choose the right way the next time. Discipline is important. And the Bible says that if you love your kids, you're gonna discipline them. So don't look at discipline as a negative, mean thing that we do to our kids, but recognize that discipline is something that we do for our kids so we can train them up in the way that we want them to go.